Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we are back with another brand new video. Today is our video, we are finally back in action after a quietish type week. The real football is back as Rangers play Ross County at Ibrox. But before we go any further on with today's video, as it has been a bit of week since the last cheap plug, if you enjoy the channel, why not help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button. It's free, doesn't cost you a penny and it just helps us on our way to hopefully reaching our dream of 55 freaking K. But YouTube dreams and all that to one side, let's get on with the video then, shall we? And starting off as always with the old oppositional preview, let's have a look at this big Yogi's Ross County side that currently sit 10th in the SPFL. Only one point off the bottom, having played two more games than Mullerwell and one more game than Hamilton. And I think given the current circumstance that they find themselves in, I think it's fair to say this team knows that they need to work extremely hard and get results and get points if they want to remain in this league, especially with the games played and all that the way it currently is in the SPFL. And I think if you go and check the most recent game of football, they certainly are playing like they know every game is absolutely vital as they hosted Aberdeen at their park and ended up pumping Aberdeen for freaking one. No, I'm no kidding, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll be honest, I had Joe Lewis in my fantasy team that week. Sickening. But my own personal blunder and all that to one side, the actual game of football between Ross County and Aberdeen was played nearly to perfection by Ross County, as you saw what they're trying to do under John Hughes. He's got a wee bit of football in there, they're trying to install that, trying to play it for the back, trying to zip some passes around, but they're chasing down in packs, they're working their arse off, and they didn't give Aberdeen time or space on the ball. They go into them at every opportunity, and at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, you look at the stats... In the game, Aberdeen finished with five shots on target, but so did Ross County, and the quality and the difference in finishing was absolutely staggering between the two sides. And you know something, ladies and gentlemen, that's the second time that's happened now for Ross County under John Hughes, which I think rubbishes the, the notion that that was a fluke result versus Aberdeen, because you look at it, since the 21st of December when John Hughes was appointed, they've played six games, they've only won two, one of them being the Aberdeen game we just spoke about, but the other game they won is when they went away to Easter Road and bet Hibs 2-0, and another game of football they got the ball doing, tried to match had been the best that they could, and they matched them in terms of their output in front of goal as well, because Hibs got four shots on target, so did Ross County, but once again, the difference was in the quality of finishing as they came away with that 2-0 win. Which I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I'll happily take a 2-0 win at Easter Road on Wednesday night, but regarding this game of football and regarding Ross County, I think that result mixed with the Aberdeen result certainly rubbishes the aspect that this is going to be an easy game the more, because this Ross County team isn't he? A walkover. And we played a team last week that was having a managerial bounce, and I think we are playing one again the more. Now, again, if you look at it on paper, he's only won two games out of these six, which isn't necessarily suggesting that there's a big bounce in the club. But you have to go deeper than just on the surface results and look into the games that they've lost, because in those six games, they've lost three. One of them was when John Hughes was appointed, just two days after, sorry, John Hughes was appointed, and that was away at Celtic, right? They did comfortably lose that game. Celtic were actually looking good for once in that game. But their next game that they actually lost was versus St Mirren, which I think we can all agree right here on this channel is one of the toughest teams to play this season in the SPFL. But even in that game, Ross County, it took, sorry, Ross County losing two players and two late goals for St Mirren to put this Ross County team to bed. And you look at their third and final loss they've had so far under John Hughes, and that was away at the Tony Macaroni, which we all know is a very difficult place to go, especially against this Livingston team that's on the up right now. And guess what? In that game of football, Ross County was in it, battling. It was one each until the 81st minute, where once again, Ross County conceded two late freaking goals. But every game that they've played under John Hughes, they've been in it until pretty much the last 10 minutes. So for me, ladies and gentlemen, this Ross County team isn't as poor as they look at first glance when you look at league or at first glance when you look at John Hughes's record so far, unfortunately. But I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I certainly take encouragement by the fact that they give so much early in to a game that they sort of run out of steam in the last 10, 15 minutes and they have been getting caught off teams. I do like that aspect of the old 
oppositional preview. And you know something, with that being said, that's us kind of reached the end of the old oppositional preview. Am I expecting an easy game, Nomura? No, I honestly know. I think this is a big, honest side that gets stuck in, who tries to make it difficult, sorry, but also try and play his football out for the back in that as well, which I do think is going to be very interesting to see if they stick with that. Speaking of sticking with that, are they going to set it up in their 4-3-3, three, three, which worked to perfection versus Aberdeen in their last game? I don't expect so, ladies and gentlemen. I expect them to revert back to their 4 5 1, which worked superbly versus Hibs and asked a lot of questions of Livingston as well as it packs the middle of the park and it sort of doubles up on the wide areas, which I think teams will try to do as all season long with how superbly Tavernier and Barisic goes forward. But even in saying that, ladies and gentlemen, that isn't a new to us. That isn't a surprise. We've faced that pretty much all season long and we've always had that moment of magic from one of the two of them or someone stepping up and being the difference maker and fingers crossed we have that in tomorrow's game versus Ross County as well. Early would be nice for the old ticket. But again, looking at this Ross County team under John Hughes, they certainly appear to love conceding late goals. But with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's flip over and talk about what matters most to all of us here on this channel and that is of course Rangers. It's an interesting one for Rangers coming into this game because not only is it Steven Gerrard's 150th game as manager, which again is outstanding and what a job he's done during those 149 games so far and hopefully I'm sitting all smiles for his 150th, but it's also interesting the fact that we know what happened last week. We know we did receive a wee bit of a kick up the arse and a disappointing result. So it's going to be interesting to see how Rangers respond. That's right, people. Unfortunately, I did have to remind everyone watching we did drop points in our most recent game. And I do apologise for that. But I still feel the exact same way as I did last week. A wee kick up the arse now and again isn't it the worst thing needed to keep a team grounded and keep a team hungry gone and wanting to win things like we all know we want to this season and I'm just looking at this game and I'm hoping and praying that I'm sitting here the same time the more I'm saying yes it was ladies and gentlemen we took exactly what we took from the 0-0 draw versus Livingston we took what we took from the draw at Easter Road versus Hibs early in the season and it got us back sparking and I know I got some crap for some people down in the comment section below and I got some crap on social media saying oh you should be made angry at this result you should be digging players out you're burying your head in the sand CJ but for me a week on I still feel the exact same way very disappointed last week but hoping we could use that feeling to get us back firing. And I think firing again is one of the main themes that I took from this week's press conferences from both Joe Aribo and Steven Gerrard. Both of them did mention and they did speak about the need to get better at starting games and starting quicker, which I think we can all agree right here on the channel. We didn't agree on much, but I think we can all agree that we need to get better starting these games off. And besides the fact that the team is obviously focusing on starting this game much more quickly than they have done over the last six to eight weeks, if we're being brutally honest, I think the return to one man will provide that extra bit of spark to get us backfiring in all cylinders. And as you may or may not be able to tell, that is of course Ryan freaking Jack because Joe Rebo sat there and said it almost word for word what I wanted to hear. Ryan Jack back in training, the intensity has went right back up because that's what he brings to the team. Is he going to not make people nut? Is he going to run by everyone and score for 30 yards? Not. But does he go in there and demand and kick the living crap out players and get them to up to here? Aye, and we're hearing that for the players. We know that's why Steven Gerrard loves him. And I think having that man back now that he's confirmed to be in the squad for tomorrow is going to be absolutely massive. Maybe more so than what we actually see just on the part. Now again, as usual, Steven Gerrard didn't confirm whether or not Jacko would be starting tomorrow, but I think he will definitely play. And again, I think the intensity that's obviously went up in training that we've heard about, I think that is going to bleed over and carry over into this game. So I'm expecting a fast start from Rangers, whether Ryan Jack starts or not. And having Jacko back, could he be at a better or bigger time for this Rangers side. Because you look at it, ladies and gentlemen, where we are in the season with teams, especially near the bottom, fighting tooth and nail for every single point, which could be vital. Teams are going to be a bit braver now because the time's running out in the old season, so they are going to be putting more people forward. They are going to try and catch teams and try to go after Rangers a bit more than they did in the first couple months and I think when you have Ryan Jack back in the team his defensive awareness will be vital with him being a bit more braver and going for it a little bit more because he can see and identify danger before anyone else 
in our midfield. So ladies and gentlemen, isn't it just Ryan Jack that's back in there into the old midfield to help with the defensive side of things? No, 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 no. We've also got another player returning to the old squad by the name of Kamal Roof who will get us back firing again going forward because we know what Kamal Roof is all about. We know he's a fantastically talented player and there will be a decision made late on whether or not he's involved in the game versus Ross County. Now, me personally, do I think he will be involved? No, I think we will keep him for Hibs because that was the original timetable that we were given. But just having the options here, Ryan Jack and Kamal Roof to an already fantastic Rangers side that's done so well over the last couple of weeks, you add them back in, I'm happy. Happy guy. Speaking of happy, by the way, we've got very positive injury news for both Katic and Big Scotty, Scotty Arfield, with the latter being penciled in for a return early February, which I think we can all agree on yet again that that will be massive, having his goal scoring and his running from midfield back into this Rangers team. Brown to hear that the boys are coming back sooner than originally suspected. Fingers crossed that that continues and we see both of them very soon. And you know something, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is it for the old video. That is the oppositional preview. That is the Rangers conversation and that is the latest Rangers injury team news. Now all that's left is for all of us to take all that information and go ahead and try and predict the game of football. While you guys are hopefully getting involved down there in the comment section below, I will give you mine very, very briefly. I'm expecting a tough physical game but I think the way Yogi players, I think it will play into the favour of Rangers and I just think we're gonna, are eventually going to breach the defence and when we do I think we'll add a couple of goals in so I'm actually going to go a wee bit higher than it has been over the last couple of weeks but I'm going to go Rangers 3, Ross County nil. That's if Jacko starts the game by the way, if he doesn't start I think it'll be 3-1 just with how attacking Ross County have been over the last couple of weeks but in terms of my goal scorers are going to be very simple, Cedric in. Ryan Kent, that's right, I'm backing the boy, and none other than the skipper, because it's been a wee well since Tavernier scored. A cheeky wee go. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Now you've heard my say, make sure you get involved down there in the comment section below. And if you did get involved in the comment section below, I'll be seeing you very, very shortly. But from me to thee, thank you for taking time out your day to sit here and talk about Rangers things with me. I'll see you the more after the game. Take care of yourselves. All the best, and bye-bye.